Got a pit win, Steeler win. It's a good Monday in Pittsburgh, isn't it? Um, obviously, you know, our kids had an exciting win, and, and it, was a, it was a team victory down in, in Knoxville for our kids. Um, they went down with a great attitude. Uh, as I said afterwards, in that crazy Zoom, hopefully we don't have to zo do a Zoom call after a game anymore. Um, but, uh, you know, our kids played hard. They weathered the storm and um, couldn't be prouder of the way they uh, played. There was a lot of good execution. There was some mis-execution, you know, in really all three phases. Uh, the worst probably being in special teams that we got to clean up, which is, you know, I always say it's nice to have mis-execution and Ws at the same time. And that's what we're able to get is have some poor execution. You learn, live and learn from it. Um, and then it'll be a focus this week. I'll be all over special teams and um, we'll get that stuff fixed. And then we move on to week three. We closed that chapter last night in, in a hard way. Uh, just, you know, just close the door on it and we move on a, a very good, you know, uh, Mac, Mac uh, football team in Western Michigan. Um, a team that's, you know, favored to win the Mac, I believe, from a lot of different places. And um, Tim Lester's the head coach, he's a super coach. I've known Tim for a long time, uh, former quarterback at Western, uh, really smart. I know how detailed he is. He's a guy that's an offensive guy that's really spent a lot of his time here in the offseason on defense and through the, the offseason. So I know he's really focused on what the defense is doing. And they've, you know, I think they had nine three and outs last weekend, which is, um, you know, probably, you know, as good as you can get on a defense on any given uh, Saturday afternoon. Um, and, uh, you know, there's you know, a lot of familiarity with their staff. You know, it's a Midwest staff. So uh, one of the co-offense coordinators, a guy named Mike Bath, who was a quarterback for us at Miami of Ohio back in the Ben Roethlisberger days. So he's smart, um, detailed, uh, again, really well coached on offense. Um, and uh, on special teams, uh, Joe Palsik is my old linebacker coach, excuse me, old safeties coach, DB coach at, uh, at Miami of Ohio when I was there back in 2003. He's a special teams coordinator and does an excellent da uh, job. His dad was an old time uh, NFL coach for a long, long time. So uh, Joe is there. It'll be good to see him Saturday uh, afternoon. And then Lou Esposito is their defense coordinator uh, who's been, you know, been doing it for a long time and is a great friend of uh, Coach Lester. So they're working together on defense. So it'll be a challenge. You know, it's not going to be easy. Um, you know, uh, our kids will be ready to go. We'll have a great week of practice. We'll have a better week this week than we had last week. And we'll just continue to do that throughout the season. So questions? Have you ever played a team where you didn't know somebody on the other staff? Um, you know, um, Jerry, you always got the good questions. There's, yeah, there's been times, um, you know, again, I really don't know Josh Hype. I know him because we played him, but I don't know him. Uh, he's not a guy that you, you know, have worked with side by side and all that. So, you know, or, or coached. So, you know, Western's got a little bit different flavor that way. I didn't mention that Tennessee would make a big one. How do you make sure these guys stay focused? And I guess where is that senior um, you know, it, it starts with me. I got to make sure they're locked in, and uh, it'll be a hard week's practice. That's for sure. Um, and you know, the leadership will help. I mean, Kenny Pickett's, you know, uh, captain number one. So it'll start with him and, and how he practices. And guys will guys will follow those those seniors. So uh, the way they flow, and the way they go, and the way they they approach this game. Are they watching more tape than they watched last week? I mean, all those things was is stuff that will. You know, we'll be all over, and um, I don't see that as a problem. I think we have a mature football team. Um, you know, we will not overlook anybody. You know, when you put the tape on, they're well coached, they're tough, they're physical, uh, and they play hard. Um, you know, you don't get nine three and outs on defense, and um, you know they got some they got some good players. They got some players that are familiar with what we are. I mean, Sky Moore, Pittsburgh guy that's uh, you know didn't play last week, played against Michigan, got banged up a little bit. I think they saved him for for Pitt to come back home. Um, he's explosive, and then. On defense, you got you know Theron Coleman, a Pitt graduate, coming into Heinz Field, and uh, and Bryce Gardner, another Pitt graduate, both graduate transfers. That uh, I think Theron was hurt last year. Bryce played um, in a short season for the, for the MAC. I think they played four or five games, um, but they're both back healthy and and uh, ready for that COVID sixth year. So, we'll be ready to roll. Pat, you guys are putting up a ton of points right now, second most in the ACC. You guys still have, I think, found a consistent run game. How have you felt about, you know, what you saw how they finished last week compared to you know, how they were building? Yeah. What are you looking to see this week? Well, consistent run game is based on how you define it. You know, um, I define a consistent run game as with four minutes going to the game and we had to run it and we're not going to put the ball in the air and throw incomplete passes and stop the clock when they got one timeout left, we ran the ball. So, I mean, if we really wanted to come out and just, you know, start off on a P and 10, after you know we fair catch the ball at the 25 yard line and just run it, 
Um, you know, I feel like we could, but we're trying to mix it up and be balanced. And I think right now we are, we have some balance to our offense. Um, but you also got a quarterback that you know can throw it. Um, you got some talented receivers, and we got to spread the ball around. We got you know we showed two tailbacks last week. You know, I hope uh, Rodney Hammond gets a chance this weekend as well. Um, but uh, you know, I think the slower start didn't give him a chance to get in there uh, in the first quarter, and we were just playing catch up as opposed to playing in, in front. So. Um, you know, I feel like we can run the ball when we need to. Um, and again, we got to do a better job executing some of the things up front. And, you know, they threw, I mean, we saw more ran coverage than we thought we'd see. They threw more blitzes that we thought might happen, but you can't prepare for which ones and, and when. Um, and I know Coach Whip felt like, you know, um, you know, as many, many points as you scored against an SEC team, he felt like, man, it was just one playoff, like, you know, you know just switching the plays up, which sometimes happens as a play caller, offensively or defensively. I mean, it's all when you call those plays. And the great thing, we scored enough points to win. And Coach Whip's, you know, not not very happy because he feels like he could have called an even better game. So, um, you know, you just got to sometimes be lucky uh, with some of your play calls and what are they doing. But that goes with the, the games that you have on tape and knowing, you know, you sit there and look at Penn State tape and you're thinking they're going to do some of that stuff. And then they got more stuff and uh, different shows. So, um, you know, they ran some blitzes into some of our runs that we got to be able to pick up or, or get the ball out. I'm not saying you're through four down calls on Saturday with gambles, but with a mature team and a fifth year quarterback, do you feel more comfortable going for it in situations like that? Yeah, I mean, it goes down to your, you know, how do you feel in, in your run game, uh, which I feel more comfortable. Um, and, uh, you know, we just got to look at the look at the numbers there and find out, you know, what we like. And, you know, we're not going to go for it on every fourth and one or fourth and two or three or four or five. But if we're, you know, if we feel good about our play, you know, plays that we have available, you know, in your back pocket and, um, you know, tell you what, it's, it's, uh, it's a problem as a defense when someone gets four down instead of three to get a first down. It's a lot easier. Uh, to get a first down when you use all four of your, you know, your downs to, to, to get that first down. So, uh, again, one of those reasons is Kenny Pickett, you know, the trust we have in him. But it's also those receivers we have trust in that when you throw the ball, they're catching it very well right now. And, uh, and having, you know, back in an offensive line that can, that can push the pile. So. You mentioned that there, Bryce, is it kind of nice to be so familiar with two of their, their DBs when you go know, yeah, I mean, we went back and pulled a bunch of their one-on-one -on -one tapes, which is easy with, you know, XOs to pull out all their one-on-ones and watch how they, they play. And obviously, they've gotten better in two years. Um, but, you know, we, we know who those guys are in the back end and and we'll attack, you know, accordingly. So that does help when you know somebody a little bit better. Um, but they're, they're both good football players. I mean, they were ACC football players, played a lot of downs here, and, and two unbelievable kids that I can't wait to see after the game. How do you feel about your past defense on Saturday, and what areas are you kind of focusing in on heading into this week? Forward you know, for, during the game, I didn't feel so good. At least in that first, you know, first quarter, you know, you're seeing, you know, and again, you're watching the, you know, the rush, you're watching the quarterback, and then you look down the field, and you're, you're seeing separation, and you know, we knew there'd be separation. I've had separation with everybody, um, but I always say this: when you're playing corner and you're playing press technique, you win at the line of scrimmage, okay? And you win with your feet, hips, and hands. And when the guy has to run around you, okay, you're messing up the timing. So everybody sees overthrows, but to me, it's winning at the line of scrimmage. And, uh, and you know, you look at Marquez, I mean, he was behind and then he finishes, he's out of phase and finishes on that big deep play where uh, number 11 got hurt, I believe. I'm not sure he returned. Um, and uh, I mean, he, he just finished and, and played great football. And that's a, that's a heck of a play. But, um, you know, I told you that the stresses they put on you when they spread you out there, there's not much else you can do. You're, I mean, I mean, whether you play cover three or cover one, you're going to be, you know, all you'd be doing is wasting a safety in the middle of the field based on what they do because they're throwing the ball out there. You play cover two, they'll run the ball down your throat. So uh, it's kind of pick your poison. Um, and, you know, we, we, sh we should have, could have done a better job really at the quarterback draw is the one that got us. But, you I mean, there's pass setting. You know, you're worried about getting hands on those fast receivers down the field. But I thought, you know, you know, all in all, the kids did a nice job. You know, I'm mad about, you know, that quick, you know, we call it a now route where they throw it out there and the guy comes down the sideline. A.J. Woods didn't do a good job turning it back. Safety was in position, but it got outside the corner. Corner's got to send it back in. So those are some of the things. I mean, those 50-50 balls usually are about 20%, but you have to win at the line of scrimmage and you mess up the timing. And that's what you saw is, is, is messed up timing. You mentioned that bubble screen for touchdown. In terms of the tackling as a whole on the game, how did you assess that? I thought it was average at times. I mean, you know, uh, I think our linebackers had quite a few missed tackles. But again, give them credit. You know, it's not like you're, you're playing against, uh, you know, the children of the poor. I mean, it's, uh, it's a good football team that got skill and, uh, and they're going to make you miss. But, 
but our guys didn't, our guys, you know, kind of broke down too much more than we want. They need to go take shots. And that was kind of one of our keys to victories is to go take shots at these guys. Don't give them time to, to, to make you miss. And we didn't do a good job there. We got to practice better at that this week. So that'll be a focus this week of uh, when we go thud and we don't go live. Uh, actually, tomorrow we'll probably go a little live, um, you know, a period or two. But, uh, you know, we, we got to tackle better. We got to take better angles. Uh, and we got to get our feet in the ground. What was it like having Hendon Hooker come into the game, a player that Pitt's had experience going against in the past? Yeah, you know, you didn't think you were going to see Hooker, you know, uh, when Milton went down. Um, and I hope he's healthy. Um, you know, here comes Hooker out there, you know, from seven to five. And, and they both look really good on the hoof, too. I'm like, you know, I thought maybe they changed numbers because they both are good looking kids. And I saw Hooker after the game, great kid. Um, but. You know, we knew he was a good football player. I mean, he's, you know, he started in the ACC for a long time. He's won a lot of football games at Virginia Tech. So uh, it was interesting. You know, we had to kind of go back and look at some of our notes because you didn't really even prepare for him. You, you knew Joe Milton was the guy. And, um, you know, so we had to kind of go back to what does he do well. And we didn't do a good job on some of the bubbles, which, you know, and some of the quick game, which is kind of what he does well. And, uh, and then they hit us with a couple of tight end verticals versus some zone pressures, which uh, was a weakness for us. I know about the Mari route. I know that you guys, they talk about, you know, needing to trust your guys out in those jam situations. They went after him, let's say, a fair amount of time. It seemed like he called his own. Yeah, Demari's a good football player. And, you know, even the one, you know, PI he had on a post route, I mean, he's right there. I mean, he's got his hand near him, but you know, there's no restriction at all. And he's on top of the guy. He's not like he's running behind the guy. He was on top of the post. And, you know, I wish he'd have got his hand off the tail and, and got a pick. I mean, he had a chance if he puts two hands up there to get an interception. So, um, what are you going to do? Yeah, what are your impressions of starting? Sam, Sam's, Sam's been unbelievable. I mean, you go into that atmosphere and kick field goals, you got, you know, you got, uh, f you know, faith that he can do it anywhere now. I mean, you know, you wonder how he's going to react. You I mean, uh, you know, I think some guys looked at the atmosphere and didn't, you know, play like they needed to play in that atmosphere when the lights turned on. You know, Sam is the guy that went out there and, uh, and did his job. So we, we, I was, I was happy for him. That was, a, that was a bright point in the special teams. When those uh, Tennessee receivers were getting the separation, were they winning at the line of scrimmage over your, your DBs? Did we just talk about that? If the ball's overthrown and they didn't, and if you watch the tape closely, and again, on the field, I was like, oh, my God, we can't cover these guys. But when you watch on the field, we got them almost all the way down the field, and then right at the end, it's a little push by them, and all of a sudden there's a separation. If you watch it close, we're on them, and then there's separation. Um, and again, the one that, that uh, Mark Quest Williams made a stop on was kind of a different coverage. It's almost like a cover three. He was trying to split number one and two receivers, and number two is the guy that got down the middle. He's got to lean a little bit more. So that one was a zone coverage as opposed to a man coverage. Um, but most of those, you know, were on him. And then at the last second, there's some separations, some push offs, and, and uh, we don't seem to do much with that. But, you know, sometimes happen. But again, being physical at the line and trying to, you know, reroute that guy and making him run outside of his. His comfort and get him off the red line is important. Are you playing a lot of zone? Are you playing more zone this year than you have in the past? You tell me, Gary. You got the tape. You got the TV game. You DVR'd it. We're playing a little zone. We play a little man. We play a little bit of both. I mean, so we do a little bit of both. But, you know, against them, I'd say we probably played 70% man. You had to um, because you're out there on an island. I mean, anytime they're way out there standing on the sideline, you know, what are you going to, you know, you're going to play cover three and you got. A corner out there in his third. There's two guys in his third, and that, if the free safety, you know, if the middle field player, can he lean over that way? Well, then they got you over there on a post. So you're just covering grass if you're in some type of zone coverage. A couple of slow starts on offense to start the year, but once you guys really get it going, it seems like you're really in a rhythm. How do you guys want to avoid a slow start this weekend? How do you yeah. anticipate doing that? We'd like to start fast, and again, I attribute a little bit of that to you know uh, our kickoff return team, you know, not allowing us to. I mean, there's some of those balls that should not have been fair, you know, they should have been, you know, touched outside there on the numbers where we caught them. So, um, you know, it's, it's tough in that crowd. I mean, all we did is move our offense a little bit further right into that student section where they could scream and yell. And now, again, there was just, a, you know, the nerves. You know, the, the great thing about the offense is I think we had one false start, uh, you know, one unforced error. So we talk about dealing with the crowd noise. You know, I've been in a lot louder places than that place for sure. Um, and, uh, you know, it wasn't an issue at all. Matter of fact, I think they had more issues than we did. Yeah, there's you know, we give him parameters and you know we won't get into that. But again, it's another young kid that's never dealt with the crowd. I mean, he's you know he's a freshman that you know has never been in that atmosphere ever again. So we got a lot of faith in him and uh, he'll learn from it and we'll get better. And and again, you know, to me, you put that 
you know, as a judgment call, and he's got, he's got to know when and where, but, you know, it's just like telling a punt returner not to catch the ball inside the 10-yard line or 8-yard line, and how many times do you see it happen? Um, it's just, you know, you get in that game and, 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 and things happen. So he'll, he'll figure that out. And, again, I put it on coaching as well. I mean, you know, anytime you, know, you talk about that, whether it's, a, you know, a good or a bad, I mean, there's coaching involved, and we just got to do a better job coaching him and, and all of our guys in some of those situations that we ran into. So... How do you have success early on with little like rub routes and stuff like that? How do you rub pick routes? You mean? Yeah. How, how do you how do you manage to work around that as a defensive coach? Yeah. Well, uh, you know, hopefully, hopefully they get looked at on you know on the field and and, um, and you know pick, picking is illegal. So we saw some of those, um, and you know we have different calls to take care of that if we want to. Uh, you know, it's most of the time it was a five yard route uh, that they were trying to pick us on. I mean, I mean, then you know, sticking our arms out trying to you know purposely pick you is, is illegal. So, we just I guess we got to do a better job working through those. Do you think your guys, your kick or return guys, call too many fair catches? No. It just seemed to me there was one I remember I said to myself, well, he had a lot of room to run, you know, if just taken it from. Yeah. Again, it all depends on where your returns go, Jerry. You know, their kicker did a heck of a job putting it, you know, way outside. Okay. And the problem is when you kick it way outside, let's just say they put the ball in the numbers when you look at where they're going, they're putting the ball in the numbers, they're, they're gonna squeeze their coverage all the way down inside the hash. So you got 10 guys covering the, you know, a kickoff inside the, you know, outside the hash. Okay, there's not much space there. And then now you're running sideways to get it to the field and then you got issues. So it all depends on where your return's going. Um, you know, if we wanted to try to you know, smack something up through the boundary, you know, you're fighting an uphill battle and you know, uh, Kenny, Coach Whipple, you know, that fair catch 25 yard line is a, is a, it's a nice place to start. And I think everybody saw that on Saturday. It's not, it's not fun to start at the 14 yard line. How do you feel about the discipline of your offensive line? Coach uh, Ford said, uh, week one, he said we didn't have any penalties like that. And now, like you said, on the, on the road, loud, hostile environment, the procedure doesn't run as much of a problem for you guys. Uh, how would you see from them just in a different short? You know, Coach Borbley does a great job. It's a discipline. They're locked in all the time. I mean, I really like our offensive line. So, um, you know, they're paying attention to the details. And again, we can get a lot better blocking and picking up some different stuff. Um, you know, some of the blitzes, you know, some of the blitzes you see, I mean, you know, looking at it from a defensive standpoint, you know, you're seeing safeties come up the field and blitz off the edge. And you're looking at, you know, you know, you, 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 if that's the center, you got a tackle out here. You know, what's he keying? In a normal situation, he's, you know, not looking at the ball, but in a silence cadence, you got, we're keying the ball. You know, and you can't be out here looking at this safety and then the ball moves and you, you know, you're, you know, you're stuck. You now you're really late. So there's some situations that I think people overlook, you know, in the big world of things. And, uh, you know, there's a, for an offensive line, I mean, they did a heck of a job in that atmosphere of, of picking up what they had to pick up with their eyes and so many different, I mean, you got to go from here to that ball to your, you know, whether it's a five technique, a nine technique, whatever it is, or a safety coming off the edge. And they brought a few of those, which probably a good game plan in a, in a loud atmosphere, knowing you're on silent cadence. How did uh, Izzy and uh, I don't give their grades, but I mean, I think they both had winning performances. I mean, they both played well. I mean, they ran the ball hard. They protected well. They flipped some guys upside down. Uh, you know, I think Kenny got sacked once, and if he doesn't slip, it would have been one sack on the day. I think one was a two-yard sack. So um, they protected well, and, and, uh, and when they had the opportunity, you know, they ran the ball well. They had the right reads. Again, sometimes there were some safeties coming off the edge, and, and you know, but that's part of the game of football. Offensively, I mean, make the requisite improvement from week one to week two. Yeah, um, you know, I think we did. You know, overall, offensively and defensively, um, but you know, you got to consider the opponent. I mean, if we'd have played, you know, UMass twice, you'd probably see a little bit more improvement. Um, but you didn't. You played, you know, UMass, and then you went to an SEC program. You know, very talented guys. I'm just telling you, there's, you know, there, there's some talent on that football team. Uh, there was a lot of NFL scouts there watching. You know, obviously our guys and their guys. So um, they're, they're, you know. I wouldn't be shocked if they had, you know, five or six guys get drafted off that football team. What was it like when uh, you guys come off the field and you see that many pit fans in, in the section and saw the cool news of you guys and you bring the flag down? That had to be a cool moment just for you guys on the road. That's yeah. all we were wrong. Yeah, we appreciate, appreciate you uh, asking that question, Chris. Our fans were unbelievable. You know, I heard they were unbelievable. I actually had a video sent to me uh, Friday night, how they took over Knoxville, I guess. Um, and... Uh, you know, our fans were unbelievable. They were really, really good. We need that again this weekend. Uh, from my understanding, the game is not televised locally, so, uh, you know, get your tickets and get there. But our fans were unbelievable. They helped us win that football game. We can't do it together. You know, we talk about we, not me. 
And the we part of it is our fans were there. You felt them. Uh, you heard them. Um, you know, I think early in the, in the game they were yelling and chanting SEC, SEC. And then late in the game I heard a, you know, ACC, you know, come, you know, crashing down in uh, Neyland Stadium. So it was, uh, they were impressive. They were good. It was fun to sing the fight song with them uh, in that atmosphere. Got quiet in the fourth quarter. Pretty quiet in there. Out of, out of my control, for sure. You know, I kind of like it. Like, get to the stadium, uh, you know, get to the stadium and help us out. I like it. Can't do anything about it, but I think it's, it's good. Uh, you know, that's why I'm letting people know early, hey, get there, we need you. So 